What's up guys? Guess what? I finally got around to editing that Alaska video that I shot last year. Yes, the creative block is gone. Finally. Thank you. Thank me. Thank somebody. Anyway, it was like magic. I put on my cold foot camp t-shirt and my fuzzy hat and all of a sudden I got into the mood to start editing it. Finally. I've already said finally. But I'm excited. So a lot of you know that I went to Alaska mainly with the intent purposes of filming the Aurora. Well, the Aurora is in pitch black darkness is the best way to see it. How are you going to film that without an expensive camera? I don't have an expensive camera. I've just got one of these things, right? So I got a lens for it. It was the wrong lens. I should have gotten a fisheye lens, but I did get a lens good enough to take pictures in the dark. Most of you guys are just going to want to come here to see my failed attempt at trying to film the Aurora Borealis. Yeah, and laugh at me. It's a learning experience. I don't care. Anyway, if you want, if you came here for that, here it is. This is our group. The guy in the orange jacket is Dave. He's the guy that set everything up. And uh, yeah, this is the group that we ended up hanging out with for the full two weeks that we were in Alaska. And what an awesome group. This was one of our first stops. It's actually a, a river of ice. It goes both directions. Um, this is our drive. We were going to the lodge Alieska, which is a giant ski lodge. This is the, uh, the Mr. T minivan that is completely buried. I have no clue how they're getting out. Now I'm boarding the gondola. The gondola's taking us up to the ski lodge. Sorry if I'm not looking at you. Yep, up, 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 here we go. And I'm at the top. Hold on, let me talk. I think maybe just some music is going to play right now. Skiers going down the hill. Dave's daughter Shayna in awe. She has to land around. And that's enough. We're going back down. truck driving away. This is just one of our little stops along the way. Uh, saw some guys snowmobiling and thought it would be cool to get out and experience that, especially when they're in the release. Yeah, it's going to be We're boarding the, uh, the Alaskan Railroad. Everybody's excited. Look, Everybody comes out to wave us goodbye. Anchorage was having a nice little ice sculpting contest. Actually, snow sculpting contest. I never knew there was such a thing. I guess it's kind of like sand sculpting. Maybe. We saw the first moose of our trip. Yay, moose. Second moose of the trip. Beautiful mountains. I decided to take my camera and put it out of the porthole in the train and nearly froze my face off. Now we arrive at Talkeetna. Talkeetna is uh, just a little 
kind of, I guess it would be a hunting camp. It's a little vacation cottage type place, and they had some really nice snowmobiles for rent. We actually found them out of a brochure in the hotel that we were staying at. So we went on a three hour snowmobile trip. And somewhere along this trip, I swear, I saw a gray wolf. It was a big wolf. It looked right at me. Nobody else saw it. I swear I wasn't hallucinating. I saw a wolf. It was awesome. Everybody was jealous, but nobody believed me. I am now at the famed Dalton Highway from Ice Road Truckers. And you can see in the background here, we got the whole group taking pictures and stuff. And once again, I forgot my, my gloves, so my hands are kind of cold. It's probably negative 15, which normally isn't too bad. But this is the beginning of it. I'm standing in the middle of the Dalton Highway. Everybody's lining up to get their pictures taken. <coughs> Still coughing because it's so cold. What does it say on there? Gateway to the Arctic. The road to Prudhoe. That's a statue of a moose. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Hi, little moose. National Geographic. In front of us, we have gold sheep living in extreme Arctic. As you see, they're scratching the ground looking for lichen. Let's let's go check out these outhouses because you know we've never seen an outhouse before. We've got a lemonade stand which is pretty unique. Okay, I mean... Well, maybe Jen wants to see what the, uh, the women's bathroom looks like. Oh, there you go. Sit down on that one. Nice sunroof. So our tour bus operator, Kobe, took us to one of his favorite little sledding spots. Now, I haven't sledded, I haven't been on snow since I was probably 12, something, so I'm like a big kid. I strapped GoPros to my head. I had to, I had to, it was fun. But anyway, so we decided to stop off here, do a little bit of skiing, and the funny thing was Richard, one of, the, one of our friends on the trip, lost his iPhone somewhere on that mountain, or that little hill. Uh, Luckily, toward the end of the trip, somebody, one of the other tours that came through there that Kobe had brought back after we had, you know, toward the end of the trip, they found his cell phone in the snow, and it still worked. It's an iPhone with the case. Yeah, everybody was amazed. So, here we go. I'm just going to uh, play a little fun music, and yay.
on your knees. Does that work? your feet in. <laughs> um, having to do with uh, potential like, uh, natural uh, gas feet well, frozen. There. They've already started uh, laying the initial infrastructure for extracting natural gas in quite a few areas of the state. There we go. That's kind of neat. Get some heat in the back, please. 
Okay, so now we are on, I don't know what this place is. It's Yukon something or other. It's, um, they got barges that come in here all the time. As you can see, barge traffic only. Here we go. I'm following him. Because I want to look at this barge too. Uh, I mean, this is a tugboat. Hey look, there's like rabbit tracks. Man, why do I always forget my freaking gloves? But this is the Yukon River. That thing right in the middle is a ice road. 12 feet thick. I already said this once, such. Well, it gets kind of deep here. <laughs> Need snowshoes. Yeah. Wow, that's really neat. Okay, so I guess the bus went around the corner, slid down, kind of backed up a little bit. Me and Brian went over to look at that tugboat a minute ago and the bus was gone. So I was kind of like, what? So I ran back and uh, everybody was having tea and coffee. I got some green tea, Let's see. And um, I'm gonna come over here and look at this sign. i put my tea down. So it gets nice and cold and I can demolish it. Let's see, what do we got over here? There we go. You can see it? What does this say? Uh, ice road to Stevens Village not maintained. Ice road is not patrolled or inspected for public use. You may encounter unsafe or impassable conditions, including those resulting in loss of life and machinery. No services of any kind are available. Assume that no services are available in 30 miles in Stevens Village. Use at your own risk. In other words, you're screwed if you fall or, or get broke down. You're done. I'm walking on a river. Look, walking on a river. How cool. That's what they call the finger. It was formed out of molten rock that got pushed up through the, through the snow, the dirt. It's crossing the Arctic Circle. There we go. Thank you. We are in cold foot now. Um, we got here yesterday, but we got here really late. It was dark. I couldn't pull you out and show you anything. But uh, we went to the Aurora last night. And, uh, well, not Aurora. We went to, uh, I can't remember the name of that place. But uh, it's got a population of like 15. We went out there at 10 o'clock last night after eating dinner over, over here. I'll show you that one in a minute. And uh, we saw the Aurora. It took forever. And uh, probably about 1.30 in the morning is when it started flashing around. And it wasn't anything like I was expecting. I, you know, read a lot on the internet about stop motion photography, long exposure, you know, camera stay, all that kind of stuff. And I was expecting it to be kind of slow. It was fast. It was pretty fast. Um, I'm going to be putting that video up later. Hopefully it comes out, I can't tell. Because here, you can't bring a whole lot of gear. Because when we go back, we're going to be going back on a, uh, like an eight-passenger plane. And they got to weigh everything. So my uh, Scott couldn't bring his laptop. I can't download, I can't view, I can't do anything. There's no cell phone service, there's no Wi-Fi. We're like uh, uh, camping. Over here, this is our hotel room. It looks really nice, doesn't it? So, and, and I'll show you those a little bit. Those are, they're not nice rooms. They're really small. It's like if you took a mobile home and you, you put up paneling in between so you can hear everything that your neighbor's doing and your neighbor after that. It's lovely. But uh, this morning, it was, we had a nice surprise. This, this restaurant over, this is, this is Coldfoot. This is the only place uh, where the truckers can stop between Crudeau Bay and Oh, I can't remember the other place. The other stop. This is the only stop for 100 miles or so. So 
what they'll do is they'll come out here and see this this truck over here that's one of the ice road trucker guys he actually sat at our table today for about a 45 minutes and just shot the breeze with us that was really really cool of him um, I'm gonna show you oh look this is hotel Lake Creek Inn and I'm gonna show you here we go it's freaking cold it's really freaking cold here and last night I think it got to minus 17 which I thought was gonna be no big deal but uh, when you're standing out there trying to get a good shot of the Aurora and you have to have your gloves off to use everything anytime you touch metal it feels like you're gonna get frostbite it's lovely this is the cold foot camp I don't think I need to get a picture of it but I did want to get something but this is the truck stop here this is where all the iceberg truckers stop they even got a little section cordoned off it says truckers only you're not allowed to go in there Wasilla with Wiseman. Wiseman. That's where we were at last night. That's right. You'll see that video. This is uh, circa 1940. And the uh, the interesting thing about these cottages that we were in, like like this one here, is they had originally sod roofs, plywood floors, no foundation. So over the years, the logs start sinking in. And you see the window sills, they just keep getting lower and lower and lower. So I wonder if they have to keep cutting the doors. Either that or everybody just stays really short. So that's it, that's our little camp. Oh, sorry, I covered your face. Um, the yeah, the guy that we were talking to this morning. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I was like, where's, where's the bus? This guy always does this to us. His name's Kobe. He's like the coolest bus driver slash tour guide slash man's man ice mountain climber guy that I think I've ever met. And, uh, and that whole eight-mile trip yesterday, I don't think he ever ran out of something to say. And he kept everybody entertained. And he was a good match for all the, uh, the New Yorkers and New Jerseyans that we had going with us. He kept everybody in stitches. Okay, what this guy is, it's aroundtheworld.si, that's his website. And it seems to be, he's got GoPro videos, he's got cameras, and he's documenting his trip online. Not sure why yet, I need to go online, but he's actually out here camping, and he's touring the world on a motorcycle. This guy is like a, a true survivalist. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, no, not really a bike or uh, something a bit different. I just decided to work on 
they've been on the road four years. Where's yeah, I started in 2008. Uh, for now, I think. Iceland? Iceland? Yeah, Iceland is very isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It's got yeah. a different of different and, and, and anything. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, every country is nice. I mean, you know, every, in every country you find something. Are you French? No, why are you French? From Slovenia. Slovenia? Yeah. yeah. So Iceland is beautiful. We have to go there next. Well, he's yeah. used to the cold. Yeah. Well, thanks no very problem. much, Sebastian. Okay. Have, a, have a good time. Thank you. You too. So I had to sign the bar. Of course, I had to put my mark on there. Joe Fubar Reynolds put all my information. So if you all want to find me, actually, those who are watching this already know about me. So whatever. You know what I mean. But uh, hey, anything to get my name out, right? All right. So, we are now stopped at the Chandelar Shelf. Uh, not really sure why they call it that, but it's very white, as you can tell from behind me. There's like nothing but whiteness. And uh, some poor guy lost his van a while ago. Looks like it dropped the drive shaft. Ooh, that looks cold. <laughs> Everybody calls me Two Dogs because the name of my trucking company is Two Dogs Trucking. Okay. But that, that old girl's got a million three on her, so I call her I call her my mule. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, That's what we look up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two dogs, you should see some of the shots he's got, man. These yeah. are some of them. So this is. Uh, I'm not even sure what this is. You say it's a. Uh, a lot of avalanches in this area, so they've got to control them with cannon blasts, kind of like what we heard at uh, Alaska, the, that ski lodge. Uh, I'm not going to stay out here very long because it's extremely cold and my hand is turning a couple shades of blue. Um, but yeah, so now we're at the top of this mountain. Yesterday, I'll, if I'm not careful, tell you way more than you want to know about snow and avalanches, but the reason that spot is safe back there even because there's this big slope uphill from it is there's this nice little valley in between they call that a terrain trap it's just a feature in the terrain that will trap that avalanche as it comes down so that's really good if you're on this side of it where you definitely don't want to be if you're on the mountains recreating is down in that terrain trap or above it on a slope that could avalanche because uh, then you're likely to get buried 20 or 30 feet deep when it collects in that trap Got some wind blowing this way off of that mountain there. Looks like people actually walk up on that. Look at my eyes are tearing up. Frosting up too. Man. there's any you know any more series of hills you go over between here and Prudhoe but I don't think so I think it stays pretty much like this all the way to the water when I get out here I'll uh, I'll stop I guess take some pictures from inside but that's pretty epic out that way
Nice turn there, Joel. Like yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is our last turnaround on our little excursion. Um, I'm not sure what that's called. Grundy Lake. view in back of me and I'm actually gonna try to take some pictures this was a fun day we're getting ready to head back I think it's probably about 80 miles back on that nice road that I showed you coming up this way and uh, this was a blast I can't wait to get home and start putting this thing together seeing what I actually have seeing as I can't preview any of it right now couldn't bring any of that stuff with me. All I do is take the video, transfer it to another disc, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just jibber jabbing. <sighs> awesome day. Do you see me? Okay. So, this is my first flight on a uh, very small plane. You can see it in the back of me here. A little bit nervous. It's almost like uh, when you're a seven year old got to get your shot from the doctor and you knew about the shot for like three or four days this is this is my shot you know I don't like flying so slightly nervous but uh very small plane I really wanted to put the GoPro camera up underneath it but I don't really think that that's possible uh, I don't want to lose my my GoPro camera either um, this place this strip here is called Coyote Air Hey look, beaver fuel. Wanting a permanent structure people could visit year round. So 
There's two walls to this building. We have the inner and outer wall. And then we use what's called an absorption chiller to circulate cold air between those two walls during the warmer months. So a couple of rules when we go inside. We're going to go in together and we're going to leave together. And that's to limit the airflow. Um, we're going to stay on the carpet when we go in. It is all ice in there. So if we break the rules, we'll be pointing at you and laughing as you're on the floor. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then, please don't touch the ice. It is fragile. It does break. We actually had one of our pieces um, amputated the other day due to someone taking a picture leaning against it. And then... Um, Please hold off on pictures until the end of the tour. We're going to do about a five to ten minute tour and then I'll set you free to take all your pictures. And we get smoke in here, right? No. <laughs> and there is no bathroom. No bathroom. Oh, it's about 20 degrees inside. That's what I was jealous about. Oh, that's not bad. We're used to that. Trust me, we don't have a problem. Those of you who are doing the apple teenies afterwards, we ask that you keep your drinks in the bar area up there. Awesome. Last one in, please close the door. That's a big door. Oh, I forgot my hat. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you don't have a nice one. I'm actually kind of warm. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> okay. First, oh, I didn't first say that. ice sculptor. I did. And you are on video. <laughs> oh, right. Make some new friends. This is the knobs. It's almost close. There we go. All right. So off to the left, we have our work area. We employ two ice carvers, Steve and Heather Price. And they're a married couple. And together they hold over 20 world championships. They are very They're actually doing an Appaloosa with another couple. They're actually doing an Appaloosa with a Native American riding on its back shooting bone and arrow. So if you look behind you, we have an Appaloosa head with a Native American. They were a younger couple. They were practiced this last week. And then if you look back into the work area, that piece Nice. So, and then this piece back here, when they're done with it, she'll also be coming in to take over our Venus de China, who was newly arm amputated the other day. So she'll be she'll be replacing her. Yes. Yeah. So Steve actually designs a lot of the tools that they use back here, um, such as if you see that apple teeny glass back there, that's a vertical lathe next to it. He designed that. Back on the back wall. Right there. And there's another one behind here. But um, it's called a vertical lathe, and that's what they use to make the Apple glasses. And each Apple Teeny glass is different. Um, no two are the same. They're all hand carved. So I like to say that they're like snowflakes. Where do you get the water comes from the pond, or is it special made? Yes. Or? Chunks of ice. Yeah, where is it? I know, okay, well, I'm going to just go. We're so many people and so many people with questions. I promise that we'll get to questions okay. at the end because okay. this is all yeah. part of the tour. Okay. <laughs> so, how if you make, look at me, I'm going to make Claire on the first question. Claudia, is that another question? Yeah, and I'll get that too. We'll do questions at the very end. So, if you look behind you here, we have our ice. This is harvested from our local beaver pond.
But in addition to working full time and doing competitions, they also get to do commission pieces every once in a while. So this peacock back here was for one of our brides, and she was kind enough to leave it here for us versus taking it home and trying to stuff it in her freezer. <laughs> See it to you. And then you'll all walk under the Great Wall of China here. Oh, the peak. Oh. So we have our Chinaman and our Venus and China with the missing arm. Right here. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Venus. Oh, Venus the Milo. Venus well, she's Venus the China. I don't think anybody cares about a missing arm. Oh, yeah. 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 One arm. Venus. <laughs> oh, yeah. That goes from the Roman. <laughs> Oh, and yes, that is all ice. People always ask that. The wall? Yeah. Oh my God. And it collapses. <laughs> <laughs> so back there we have our fireplace sitting thing? area. Where? Back here. Oh, Don't yeah. try to warm yourself. It's just ice. Oh. <laughs> and then back here we have our Aurora ice bar where I'll be making apple teenies after the tour. And then if you all look behind you here, we have our jousting nights piece. And this is a copy of the original. The original was made for the 1996 Fairbanks competition and it was twice the size of this one. Wow. And they took second place for that. Second place? Second place. Who took first? Dragon. Yeah, dragon. <laughs> wow. So they made this piece for the museum in 2005 and it took about 300 hours to make and about 400 hours of restoration work on it since then. So they put about 700 hours into this piece. Now, That's a good one. Nope, we have sublimation. Um, it's the ice turning to vapor, so it's without the melting. It skips the melting part. So you will notice lines throughout the piece, and that's where they've had to cut off the piece and put a new piece on. Um, they use it together with water. You'll see that the purple colored horse has a line through its head. It was cut off Godfather style, but not found in a bed. <laughs> but the original head is out front by the ice block, so you can kind of see how much it shrunk um, since they put that new head on. And as a little boy said a couple weeks ago on my tour, he's four years old, I said, what is this? He goes, knights. And I said, and what are they doing? They go, they're fighting. The blue one's the good one. The purple one's the bad one. The, blue guys, the good guy's winning, of course. <laughs> he was right. So they only get to a new about every year to year and a half, and that's because they spend most of their time doing the restoration work in here. So this is their newest piece, it's a little leopard, and when you take a flash photo straight on, the eyes will glow. So we can't do that now though. After the tour. And then we're, it's sitting on a chess board. So it used to be an Alaskan wildlife chess set, um, but the pieces to our, to our sublimation started looking a little sad, so they pulled those out and put the leopard in its place. And then if you keep moving in, this back here is our wedding chapel. And Steve and Heather were married here themselves. And we had about 30 weddings here this last year. Wow. Wow. And then the brides do like to wear the traditional gowns. You can imagine pretty short ceremony. <laughs> And then I call these snow globes that are sitting around the wedding chapel here. And I like to point out my favorites. The second on the left, the snowflake. And then second on the right is the most overlooked one. So the first couple days I even overlooked it and just walked by and said, oh, blue green log. But it's actually a little winter cabin team with the northern lights above it. So rather pretty. Over here we have our Coca-Cola bear and our little polar bear. And then we have our ice igloo, which is made of over 600 little blocks of ice. And you'll notice the two color variations of the ice, to get back to that question. So the bottom ice we call Arctic marble, and that's found at the top of the pond, and it's just ice mixed with snow, so that's why it has that white appearance to it. And then above it, we have the Arctic diamond, which is clear ice, so it's just found beneath the ice that's mixed with snow. But then they also have a lot of different techniques they use. Um, with different tools that they can give a frosty appearance to the ice as well. And since this is usually a question, I'll answer it really quick. The snow globes were made, um, they cut them in half, and then they work in the middle and piece them back together. And then the snow globes that are by the fireplace over there, those are all worked from the bottom, so there's no line. Back there, we have our ice hotel with Yes.
Right. Right. My wife hot flashes. <laughs> See that? You should have brought it. Oh, Next cool. time you know. Oh, it's quiet in here. Oh, they back off. Okay, I'll go in here. Get this head on. It's an polar bear upside down. Wow. Yeah, come over here. He's lying on his back. And now I'm happy to answer any question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that was about eight thousand. Wow, that's pretty neat. This room sounds really weird too. Yes.
The most. We only have two of The most fashionable. Beecher. Award has been presented to Peter Willa Appleseed. Yes. Well, the most fashionable. Most fashionable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peter has been awarded two awards. Oh, the person with the biggest smile at breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Murray has been awarded okay. the most fashionable adventurer. <laughs> Who also lost the most chicken feathers in his Costco coat? That is funny. David, Costco it's tissue paper. Oh, tissue paper. Tissue <laughs> paper. Nancy <laughs> Solomon. That's <laughs> one of the coldest adventurers. Could you turn down the heat on? My feet are cold. <laughs> Uh, this award has been given to Joel Reynolds for the person most likely to return to Alaska. Thank you. I thought you were going to end up with saying the most likely. And another one who are the most likely to return, Scott Reynolds. And if they're going, I'm sure Dad's going too because he's paying. Yeah. And. An award here for Wayne Wainer, the most most fashionable man. <laughs> especially at the Arctic Circle. Especially at the Arctic Circle, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Wayne has gotten two awards: the adventurer named Miss or Mister Congeniality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's funny. And the certificate. Uh, for earliest to bed, the person earliest to bed is Mike and Judy Duquesne. <laughs> <laughs> we worked hard at that. We really had training. Mike Duquesne also got another award for wearing the best ladies' hats. <laughs> <laughs> and the adventure, uh, and Judy Duquesne also got a second award. The adventure who had the first animal sighting. Yes. Uh, yes. Except, except for the wolf man over well, here. We saw it first, but it was on a train. Was a we all think it was a dog. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You saw that on the train, man? You saw something on Sue the train. Sue has also won an award here for being the most cheerful person. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. And we all know the answer to this, of course. The adventurer least likely to return. <laughs> the man who hit the man who hit a 300 foot golf foot shot above Attigan's pad. <laughs> Mike was looking for that award too, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and Mitch also won another award, the adventurer who reminded their partner, this was your idea. <laughs> 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 and Nancy also won another award, the adventurer heard saying, next, next time let's take a cruise to the Bahamas. <laughs> And Al Weinstein, adventurer who put the party in the party year. Marilyn, <laughs> you got the award, and you well deserve for best animal spotter. <laughs> and Brian Jones has an award here for the adventurer who took the most by far <laughs> photos. <laughs> What's the count? What's the count? <laughs> what, what Joe was so with the count is. How many? Uh, 4,017. Cheryl, we got an award here for adventure who bought the biggest suitcase. <laughs> and that is. Oh, I didn't hear that. Biggest suitcase. Biggest suitcase. Biggest suitcase. Oh. Okay. And the adventurer with the craziest hair after taking off her balaclava, Cheryl Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that. It was me. And the adventurer wearing the funniest hat. Tina, where are you? The funniest hat. I'm sorry, Tina. I'm not agreeing with that. Bob Bird carrying the body, his body weight in camera gear.
<laughs> and Shane Triviano is in appreciation for seeing the wonder of it all. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Kathy Murray. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know, but this woman, this woman does not like getting on airplanes at all. So she receives the award for being an appreciation for extreme bravery for getting on six flights. Yay! Any Xanax left? Yeah, just a little more. Okay, I just got three more. Kevin Murray. It's an award for being the greatest friend. Oh. Get the tissue. And my dear wife, Kathy Tribiano, gets an award for being the most wonderful for putting up with me and giving me the opportunity to, to seek my adventures. And one last wait, award. Wait a minute. And with that, Kathy, he should allow you to move that damn couch. I know. That's, and I, I that's simple. That's not going to happen. You guys see the floor. <laughs> and one last award for me. Okay. Appreciation for being the smartest for picking out my wonderful wife. Oh. There you go. I thought you were going to say wonderful yeah, friends. Yeah. Yeah. One more. We got one more. One more here. You were saying to that sheep. One more award. Uh, King of the Arctic Adventures and all around great friends to all people. David Tribbiano signed by all of your. Uh, yeah. We went to Cold Foot, not Cold Mountain. And I think everyone had a great time. Thank you for all your cooperation. I know it's a pain in the butt sometimes, but I think we all had a great time, so it's great. Our next adventure. The next adventure. Our next adventure. Oh, our next adventure. Yeah. Oh, and and Marilyn yeah. will be leading it. We'll be adventuring until 10 minutes before we die. Yes. Nancy's playing our next adventure. All right. I'm home. Did you? Yeah. He dropped you. What is this for? Are you recording? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, because I look like a hell of a mess right now. It's a reunion. Are you tired? Yeah. <laughs> no, I messed up.